open live. All right, we're live, sweetie. Are we? Yeah. It's working? <laughs> I hope so. No glitches this time? Hi, everybody. Hello, everyone. <laughs> is the video live or mine is stuck? Is it? Uh, is everything working OK? Yeah, can, can hear everybody us? hear and see us OK? We had some glitches last time, and we're, we're sort of hoping that we've got them all worked out. <laughs> Yep, it seems to be it seems to be running. All right, great, super. Okay. It's probably just taking some time to work through um, work through the the lines. The yes, line. we can. Okay, working for me. Okay, so it sounds like we're running and we can be heard. Good. <laughs> so it's nothing like a live stream where you can't see or hear anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would not <laughs> just a, a black screen. Okay, yeah, we're me? we're live. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is so exciting. Just a black screen. Oh my gosh. Hey, so let me yeah. welcome you all. Hi everyone. To Hello. a Jada Instages family crochet party live stream event. I believe this is number eight. Yes, it is number eight. <laughs> we're here, we're live. It's noon, so it's lunchtime here in Ontario, Canada on Friday. So happy Friday, everybody. And today we thought we would talk about crochet kits. So uh, last week, we showed you a crochet kit that I picked up um, at a local store, and we figured we'd unbox it for you today. So while we unbox it, we're going to talk about crochet kits. So if you're going to buy one of these kits, maybe what to expect when uh, you pick one up, things to look for in a particular kit, especially if you're going to be giving it as a gift. And also, if you want to make your own crochet kits. So this can be kind of a fun thing to do as a gift, or if you've got a bunch of crochet friends in your circle and you want to sort of give everybody a little something. We're going to talk about how to make your own crochet kits and some things to include in it that will not break the bank. And I know we all love budget-friendly gifts. Two so, quick two quick things. Yes. Um, you're getting a lot of compliments on your dress. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and um, we have a question here. Where did the crochet kit come from? Oh, this crochet kit. So um, the crochet kit in question, this one here, I actually picked it up at a Walmart. Um, a couple weeks ago, we were out and about and we stopped mostly to use the washroom. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we I, felt guilty, we so felt we had guilty. to buy food. And <laughs> So uh, actually, and I can't I can't walk past the yarn section of any store without sort of taking a little walk in. And I know that I'm not buying yarn this year. This is my stash busting year. In fact, this is the big stash busting rainbow blanket that I'm working on right now. Um, but I saw these kits and I've seen them rarely. Like I don't see these very often. So I was kind of curious and I found this is the smallest one they had. It's actually for a little change purse. And I thought it was kind of neat. And Mr. Insta just came over and saw what I was looking at. And he said, oh, you should get that. That looks kind of fun. So <laughs> I figured we would unbox it today. I have no idea what to expect. I've, I've never opened one of these. I've never bought one of these kinds of kits before in my life. But I remember when I was little that I loved getting little craft kits or sort of a, a single or multiple crafts all in one kit. That was one of my favorite things to do in the summer. So I thought maybe I would try and relive some of those childhood memories of crafting in the summer with one of these grown up <laughs> crafting kits. So I thought we'd get into that today. And I'm just actually gonna put it back down here. I wanna just take a moment to show you all where I'm at on the blanket. And so a lot of you know, I'm busting through my stash. I'm working through the big purple stripe. So this will be the last one. And I've got all my blues and my greens and my yellows. And I've got a huge, great big orange stripe. And then of course there's the pinks and the reds right down there at the bottom. It is so far, it's 52 inches or around 133 centimeters across. And I don't know how tall it's gonna end up being yet. A lot of you were asking how, like what the dimensions were. Um, I did start with, I think it was 133 chains. Uh, we did a whole um, tutorial on, on this particular stitch. So if you are late to the party and you wanted to start one of these blankets yourself, we've got a tutorial on how to do this stitch. And in the beginning of that, I talk about sort of how I started this particular blanket. Um, I don't know how tall it is yet uh, because I keep adding to it. The purple isn't finished. And some of you are giving me suggestions for colors and border types when I finish this off. And one of you suggested gold. I kind of liked that idea because I don't, um, the Gold would sort of pick up the yellow stripes, which would be kind of nice. I was thinking black or white since it's the only color that's not really in here, but I'm not sure yet. 
Um, so once I have the border on, I'll be able to measure it and give you guys an idea of how big, sort of what the dimensions were. And I'll be able to give you an idea of how much yarn in total I use. So um, I think I've got around 2000 grams of mostly chunky weight or worsted medium on the heavier side of worsted medium weight yarn in this. Um, and it's <laughs> definitely going to be like as wide as a twin. I don't know how tall it's going to be yet, though. So that is the blanket. And I will put it aside and maybe we'll get right into this unboxing. Everyone says you look really cute oh. in your dress. And they, <laughs> Thank you. They want, they want uh, me to show off. So. Oh, 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 okay. So here comes <laughs> Mr. Instant. I don't know where, where to, st I don't know if I can stand here. So hi, everyone. I'm the one behind the camera, <laughs> tapping away, tap, tap, tap. Um, <laughs> trying my best to do the emojis and stuff. <laughs> Yes, Mr. and Stitches is on the computer. I know a lot of you like chatting with him, which I think is really neat. I'm just going to walk by this time there's, there's so I don't of, knock everything over. <laughs> there's kind of two parties happening. There's me yammering away, and then there's Mr. and Stitches on the, on the computer. So, Hi, everyone. I am going to get into this crochet kit. And uh, I don't know if uh, I'll just pick stuff up and I'll show it to you. I can sort of see what's going on. Here. Yeah. So, so someone asked, what's it called? So, so what, this um, is called literally crochet kit coin purse. Um, it's by a company called En Avant. Um, Le, Bri Le Bricolage Delicieux. So it's French, apparently. <laughs> Could it be from uh, en Avant. Quebec? En Avant. France That's the something? name of it. Um Imported by Bartum Industries Limited, made in China. So this is a made in China kit. And up front, it, I'm going to tell you sort of what it says you're going to find inside and a few of the other things. I want to say that there are no um, age suggestions on this. So, you know, if you find a, a kit, especially in the kids section, it usually says um, for ages four and up or six and up or ten and up or something. This doesn't actually have an age restriction on it, which... The only reason I think is a bit strange is because the other kits in the series were definitely toys. Like they were stuffed dragons and cute little owls and just really childlike inviting things, which is why I was attracted to it. <laughs> um, but they don't have, um, they, they, could, they could have been misconstrued as a child's crafting kit is what I'm getting at. And there's no indication of an age restriction on it. So um, if you're thinking about buying a kit for a child, let's say you know someone, you've got a niece or um, a nephew or some kids or some cousins even that are kind of interested in crochet and want to get into it. I'm not so sure this would be the best choice, even though it looks fun, because I think this is actually aimed at adults. Um, children's crochet kits will actually specify an age, it'll probably have like a person on it, usually a girl, but you know, don't let that dissuade you. <laughs> and it's usually got an entire project in it that's really simple and it has bright colors. So like a scarf or, or something really cute like that. I need to announce, we have a super chat oh. from Shannon. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Shannon. And Shannon says, love your work. <laughs> I'm working on a stash blanket myself but in a wave pattern, Ooh. super thrilled, can't wait to finish so I can buy more yarn. Of <laughs> course, we all know that addiction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I work part-time at Joann's. Oh my gosh. Ooh, yeah, my entire paycheck That must just, be so tempting. <laughs> just disappear. <laughs> uh, and she says she needs to use her uh, discount and she loves you. Oh. But she's probably talking about me. Yeah, probably. Okay, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, Jen. <laughs> just teasing. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, so um, crochet kits. This one, like I said, doesn't have an age restriction on it. I would assume it's aimed more at adults. So just keep that in mind. This says that the contents are acrylic yarn, buttons, a frame, which I presume is the little snap thing that the little kit is, or the purse is built off of, a darning needle, an actual crochet hook, and instructions. So let's get into it. This just sort of slides off, and there's some. Uh, let tape me, on the uh, side. you want to put it on the table? I'll see sure. if I can focus on there so it's easier for you. Looks like a little sandwich box. Um, right, so I'm going to just. Just gonna fold up the little bits of tape. Pardon me, guys, while I mess with the camera, so you guys, ha everyone, has a better view. Oh, 
That's better. There's some more tape right here. Yeah. yeah that okay, let's open this thing up. Doesn't want to bend. <laughs> there we go. There oh. we go. That's a that's a good. Well, that's a charming looking little, wow. little collection. Wow, that is. This is some nice bright colors. Now you weren't supposed to buy any more yarn, <laughs> and to me that looks like all hey, yarn. The Stitches family gave me a pass. I thought it was a Big Mac. This is. This I'm, is... Not, I'm disappointed. Where's the Big Mac? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what have we got here? So we've got some really pretty colors of acrylic yarn. So we've got some nice bright orange, a little bit of bright pink. That's kind of a fuchsia color. Uh, some purple and some red. Let's just move this to the side. Oh, there's that pretty aqua blue. I love aqua blue. Some lime green. So far, they're really nailing it with the rainbow colors. I like this. A lighter purple, sort of a lilac, and a little smidgen of white. So there's all the yarn. That's Doesn't a that nice little uh, bundle of yarn there. There's the clip. So oh, this is the is top cute. of an old-fashioned coin purse, and it snaps together. So looks like it's a pretty good little... Doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart on me. Mm -hmm. And it's um, completely lined with little holes on either side of it. Yeah, the, yeah. And uh, that's, I'm assuming that we either sew the purse to it, um, probably, I don't know, that's, those are some pretty small holes. So, so that's the frame. And we've got some instructions here. We have another super chat oh. from, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Rosh? Rosh? Uh, it might be, I might, I apologize if I'm pronouncing it wrong. R-A-C-H. Rosh. 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 Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's how I, tell. I hope that's okay. Have you considered going to Gen Con down here in, in Indiana? Indiana. Never heard of no. the Gen Con. Uh, and teaching a crochet class. Oh, Both of fun. you uh, stay awesome from <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. Oh, I get it. Rach. That's Rachel. That's Rach. Okay. <laughs> Short form. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. Um, we we aren't really aware of that. No, we'll have to look into there's it. a there's a lot of conventions down there that I don't think yeah. we, we know much about. But we do know about Indiana. So. We do know about <laughs> Indiana, the state of Indiana. We're well aware of that. All right, so let's get a little more. So here's here's the instructions. It looks like it folds out. There's a nice big picture of the purse. So for anybody who wasn't able to really see that before, that's the purse, and the whole thing kind of opens out. There's going to be French and English in this because um, up here in Canada, everything we get is in French and English, <laughs> our two major languages. And then there's some actual photographs of what it should look like. So, so far, this looks like a pretty well put together set of instructions. We have another super chat oh, from Elle. Thank you, Elle. Thank you, Elle. Appreciate it. <laughs> thank you so much. We've got, uh, oh, wow. Okay, so here's another reason why this is definitely aimed at yeah. adults. I'm going to bring this up as close as I little, can. Yeah, well, not that's too close. Oh, too close? <laughs> yeah, that's good, yeah. Aimed at adults, and not at kids. Flip it off a bit. So there is a very yeah. small little needle in this Ziploc bag. Yeah, that is definitely not so for kids. this is definitely not, like, child-friendly. Um, and there's one little button, so there's a little package. So um, not kid-friendly, but the actual packaging of this is really nice. And most importantly... Here is the crochet hook. It's plastic. Well, it is full, super skinny. Full, full. Um, Let's see here. It is. Does it say what it is? It's a size. Oh, it's a three millimeter. So right away, um, this feels pretty flimsy. I can kind of bend it a little bit. So you yeah, want to be careful if you're going to mm. use this actual hook. I'm going to use this hook because I want to give this uh, package, um, this kit, and a, a real like fixer up or rundown. I want to see how the whole thing works and I want to see yeah, how well this that, that hook is, stands up. That's a little on the cheapy side, but I mean, small. you are getting a hook. Yeah. So that's what is in this kit. So it said it came with everything you need. And I, so far, I have to say I agree. It's a cute little bit of packaging. You want to show the package again? Yeah. So everyone, if anyone's interested, they can uh, so it had what this, they're looking for. So it had this on top of it. Make sure when you pick one of these up that it should have, <clears throat> excuse me, it should have tape on both the flappy sides and also in the front. Uh, because you don't want it to be missing anything. That would be really upset if you got it all the way home or you gave it to somebody and it was missing something. And, and disclaimer, we bought this uh, on a whim. Yeah, this, I, like, I bought this on a whim. I think it we're was... We're not associated with these people no, at all. No, not at all. This was... Uh, I picked it up at Walmart. It was $5.98 Canadian. Um, and uh, I've never bought one of these before. So I wanted to give it a try. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to have a little sip of my coffee here. 
anyway, this um, so far everything it says it came with it came with. I'm really delighted with the colors of the yarn. I don't know. I can't really speak to the quality just yet. I mean, it it feels like a size three. So I'd say that's a size three acrylic yarn. It's um, on the thinner side. It's definitely not like a medium worsted weight. Um, but the colors are nice and bright and it feels fairly strong. Like I don't, it doesn't feel like it's going to snap or <laughs> sort of break on me. And it's also not overly fluffy, which I kind of am pleased about because a lot of sort of cheap acrylic yarn is loosely spun and it's got a lot of those little fibers sort of sticking out of it. So I'd say that that's actually a pretty decent little bit of yarn. Not bad for like, I don't remember what what the price was. It was five ninety eight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so six bucks basically. That's not bad no. actually. So so far, I'd say the, the even with the the, the breakable hook. Yeah, uh, the cheapest thing <laughs> in it is the crochet hook. Um, but I mean, if you're gentle and careful, it shouldn't be a problem. If you have tight tension, plastic hooks are not for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because they can snap. snap. But if but you're gentle, I am going to give it a try. Yeah. Now I don't think I'm going to necessarily get into this today. Um, like to actually start crocheting on it. I wanted to open it up. I wanted you all to see what was in it. Um, and I wanted to sort of see what the quality of everything was. Like I said, this this little clip, this frame, is, uh, has a really nice sort of snap to it, and it's not going to come. Like I actually have to spin the little balls to get it to open. So I'm quite pleased about the the um, apparent quality of that frame. The only thing that really I question so far is the hook, and I'll get into the instructions later. Um, I don't really know how how well they're going to read, but. Maybe, I mean, maybe we'll do a dedicated uh, video on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, um, we could totally do that. Yeah, if you guys are interested and, and just, in seeing that. Yeah, let us know if you'd like to see a dedicated video um, on making this project. Yeah, and, and, and we'll, it, do it. we'll do it. We'll do it the way. how it turns out. Yeah, we'll do it the way we usually do. Plus, yeah. I'll be able to break down for you if you want to follow along exactly what I'm using, and you can sort of work along with me. Um, just because I, it's gonna, it's not gonna look right if I try to crochet with you facing me right now. So I think we'll, um, if yeah, you want to we'll do that, we'll do that it later. But that's what's in this crochet kit. So I'm actually kind of pleased so far. Yeah. I'm not really too disappointed. So with with uh, 100 percent adult supervision, mm -hmm. um, it probably, it's just that little needle. The, the needle's really the only. Uh, yeah, and I have a feeling that the needle is used to sew the actual bag to the frame afterwards so even if you gave it to a child and they were able to like do all of the crochet an adult could sit and attach and, it and to the yeah frame. and, and maybe you know i'm surprised they didn't put deal. like a yarn um, you know a safer yeah 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 well like i said i don't think this is i think this is really aimed at adults and that's that it's not it's not for kids so i thought we would also talk today a bit about making your own kits because this comes up frequently um, in the comment section. And we actually did a video uh, a little while ago on, we called it the gift of crochet. And once this becomes an actual video, Mr. and Stitches is playing with the camera again. <laughs> Excuse me, once this becomes um, a dedicated video. So after the live stream is over and this becomes a video and we can kind of add some information to the description box, we'll put a link to that specific video in the description box and you can check it out because we go into detail about some of the things you might want to include in a kit. Why would you want to make a crochet kit? Crochet kits are a fun gift for somebody who's starting out, expressed some interest in crochet, or like me, who's been doing it for more than half their life and loves it so much. Um, most of us who love a hobby never, ever, ever get tired of getting goodies associated with that hobby. So putting together a nice little crochet kit could be a lot of fun for a friend, even if they've got everything under the sun. It never hurts to have something new. Uh, budget friendly. So if you were going to, let's say, host a crochet party with some of your friends, maybe you've got some family that want to come over and learn. Maybe you've got um, you've got people of all different uh, <laughs> abilities coming. What flavor of coffee are you drinking? <laughs> it's just regular. There's nothing in it. Actually, it is dark roast Colombian. Okay, it's dark roast Colombian. You know, no you milk, know, no sugar. I drink, give I, details. I drink my coffee black. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I drink my coffee black with nothing in it. So that's all I'm having. And I'm like this when I wake up in the morning. It doesn't matter if I've got a coffee in me or not. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, yeah, so if you were going to host a little party and have some friends over, maybe some relatives, whatever, and you've got people coming who are all interested in crochet, some of them know how, some of them don't know how, I would recommend the following. You could tell everyone you're having a crochet party and you're going to make a really simple project. And a simple project, if 
experienced all together, even with people of different, you know, strengths and abilities is fun. So even if it's the most basic little pattern, and I would recommend a scarf. I know a lot of us probably learned how to knit or crochet by starting out on a scarf. Scarves are usually a simple repeating stitch. It does not have to be fancy. You know to go back and forth like a little typewriter and you just keep practicing that stitch and after a while you've got a nice long piece of fabric and of course you can use it as a scarf afterwards. This is especially great for kids because they get to see their um, process or their progress really quickly and it helps kind of keep them motivated and inspired. So how to make a scarf kit? Well, I would recommend a ball of yarn that's at least 150 to 200 grams in a worsted weight medium weight category. So that's like a size four. I think that's also considered an Aran or a DK weight in the UK um, with a decent sized hook. So if it's for kids, you can get the, the, the little kid sized hooks. Um, they're a bit bigger, a little chunkier for their hands, um, but something like a size five and a half millimeter, that's a really good hook. And if they're brand new to crochet, that hook size will serve them really well because it ends up coming up a lot in different crochet projects. How not to break the bank. If you have been crocheting a long time and you've been collecting hooks and tools and yarn and accoutrement, then you probably have extras that you don't necessarily use anymore and you wouldn't mind parting with. And there's nothing wrong with creating a little crochet kit with your previously loved things, especially if this is going to a friend or a family member and they kind of understand that you're just getting them started. Uh, you can also check out the dollar store, I have found crochet hooks at the dollar store. And in fact, the ones that I've got are double sided and I'll show those to you uh, another time, but they've got two different sizes of hook on either side. You can also find um, hooks sometimes at thrift stores or secondhand stores. Those are a good place to check them out. So not too difficult to find hooks. And if you wanna buy brand new hooks, a lot of places like Walmart carry them for a fairly decent price. You don't have to break the bank to get a crochet hook. You can raid your own stash for a ball of yarn you don't have to go out and buy a brand new ball of yarn. Of course you can if you want to, but if you're trying to sort of put together these little kits um, on the cheap for a large group of people, if you're having a party, then just raid your own stash. It doesn't matter. People love to get a ball of yarn, um, especially if it's still in relatively good condition and has its original label on it. It's good to give somebody a ball of yarn with the label on it so that they have all the washing and care instructions <laughs> included. Um, Plastic needles, so darning needles, you can pick up a bunch of plastic darning needles. I think they usually come three in a set. You can find them at Walmart for like a dollar, a dollar fifty. Sometimes the secondhand stores have them and the dollar stores frequently have large eyed darning needles. And if it's just to get somebody started or to sort of see them through for an evening's uh, festivities, then that's all they need. It doesn't have to be fancy. And a pair of scissors. So you can share scissors around the table or you can find scissors again in the same places for relatively cheap if you want to do that. That's all you need to include in the kit for the most important part. But if you want to branch out a little bit and make them kind of special and exciting, and you've got time, you don't want to have to cram all this into your schedule at the last minute, you might want to try um, adding some extra little goodies. So for example, um, these are little tiny glass jars full of buttons. If you're like me and you've been collecting buttons for, I don't know, a billion years, <laughs> you might have a lot. I've got literally big things of buttons all over the place. And you can go through your stash of buttons and find a little goodie bag or a little Ziploc bag or even a little tiny jar like this and fill it full of old buttons. It doesn't have, they don't have to match. They don't have to be all the same color, but having some buttons to add to a little project or to even put away for future projects kind of helps flesh out the kit and makes it kind of interesting. Also, if you sew, <clears throat> you can make yourself some really simple little drawstring bags. I do a little quilting now and again. I'm no good at it, so please don't ask me to do a tutorial. <laughs> I, I have a lot of trouble quilting. But um, you can sort of put together little scrap bags if you want that will hold everything inside it. Um, and they don't even have to be that complicated. Or you could even go ahead and crochet a bag and just give it a little simple lining with fabric so that nothing falls out. That's if you have the time. You can also, again, pop into secondhand stores or the dollar store and find nice little bags or 
little buckets or crates or baskets or whatever might be <laughs> sort of available at the time, especially if it's seasonal, to put everything in. And a whole bunch of these little kits all lined up at the door as people arrive is very enticing and exciting, especially if every single ball of yarn is different. And maybe if all of the little goodies that are inside are a little bit different, because if they're all uniform, that's fine. Nobody fights, especially if it's, if it's kids. <laughs> but if they're all completely different, then people can sort of gravitate towards the colors that they like the most. So putting together your own little crochet kit, whether it's really, really fancy and full of stuff or a little more on the pare down side and just sort of ready to use for that evening is really, really simple and doesn't have to break the bank. And it can be a lot of fun too. And like we said, if you want more suggestions for how to put together a crochet kit, you can check out our video on the gift of crochet. And once this is a video itself, we will put the link in the description box so down that's below. Two, that's two we're gonna have to link, the, the gift of crochet video. Mm -hmm. And what was the other one um, we mentioned at the beginning? Did we mention another one at the beginning? Yeah, um, oh shoot. <laughs> There was a second. There was oh, a, oh, a it's second the, video it's the we tutorial want, on how to do the stitch. Oh yeah, the that, blanket right, that's stitch. right. It's the, the granny shell, straight granny the, shell stitch. Yeah, the granny shell stitch. Yes, we did that one every, Anyone who uh, catches this after. Yeah, yeah. So we'll link those two under the video. Granny shell stitch. If you want to make the blanket, Jada's working yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> you might want to show say. those up just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, sure. So these are they, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um they're little jars full of buttons. Um these actually came like this from the dollar store. My sister-in-law gave them to me as part of my birthday presents because she knows I love little things like buttons and yarn and <laughs> that's all I really love. So <laughs> um but it's kind of a neat way to sort of put together a little collection of buttons and that's why I say you can have some fun with the little um, odds and ends, the little jars or the bags that you might have lying around. Feel free to reuse things. If you've got old mason jars, if you've got pretty little bags that maybe you've picked up from other parties. I know sometimes during um, weddings or other little to-dos, sometimes there'll be grab bags. And if you've got a whole bunch of those sort of collected, then reuse them, why not, right? And it's fun. It's fun to kind of put together little groups of things and collections of things. And people love it. People love to go through buttons and beads. And that's another thing you can include. You can include beads. You can include ribbon. You can include any little sort of, I want to use the word tasty, <laughs> craft supply that and you might have. We have that tutorial uh, where you covered buttons. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In fact, I'm wearing it. That's Yeah. Let me that's take right. That you want to show that? Yeah. Um, so I wear this all the time. This is a crocheted covered button. It's just a simple plastic, big plastic button, and we crocheted over top of it. So we'll put that link in the description box down below as well as soon as we're done. Um, but it's a little cro covered button. So for those of you who like to, you know, test your um, crochet thread skills and working <laughs> with a smaller crochet hook, like a steel hook, then that's a fun project for that. I... I love this. I wear this all the time. I've made several of them in different colors and they're they're also you can still use them as buttons. So if you really want to jazz up an outfit or a hat or a scarf, then you can maybe even include some crochet covered buttons in those kits. Um, yeah. I would say that that's a project that requires um, a little bit of dexterity. So if you've been crocheting a while, you're comfortable using the smaller crochet hook and the fiddly little crochet thread, then that's one you can you can definitely give a try. Um, but if you're new to working with tiny hooks and crochet thread, be patient with yourself because it does take a lot of getting used to. This is a nice idea from Riley. If uh, if we could do uh, tutorials based on using things like buttons and ribbons in crochet projects. Yeah. So more of a focus on that. Yeah, yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah, great yeah, idea, Riley. Really. series for sure. Thank you. Yeah, every once in a while we'll do a little tutorial and we'll have extra things in it that will be like, okay, you might want a button for this and this is how you put it in. But yeah, we haven't really done a dedicated video to adding in extra things. So that's a fun, that's a fun idea. Yeah, thank you, Riley. <laughs> um, I think that is everything I wanted to cover in terms of kits. So if anybody has any questions about kits, if you know of where to find some fun kits, like if you've ever found any like these yourself and you've given them a try, then let us know. And don't forget to talk amongst yourselves. I love it when everybody chats with each other in the comments section and also in the live feed during the live stream, uh, because it's great when we can share tips and information and help each other out, especially since a lot of these things can be kind of geographically based, like you might not be able to get them where you are, or you might have access to a whole 
pile of really awesome crochet things where you are. And it's great. I love it when people sort of say there's a sale on at their local store or if they know a neat place to go and find this kind of stuff because it helps us all out eventually, especially if you're brand new to the world of crochet and you're kind of still getting your feet underneath you and you're assembling your tools and assembling your supplies. It's fun to have that extra little insight into maybe where you can go to find some things to pad up your supply. For <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. Have another swig of my black coffee here. Mm -hmm, me too. It's cooling off though. That's okay. It's 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 warm. It's not boiling. It's not like the last couple of live streams we've done where we've been absolutely oh, melting. Oh, it's so much better now. But <laughs> so that's cool. There's a bit of a breeze and it's it's really nice. Nice, nice, uh, nice Friday in southern Ontario. It feels good. We don't we don't have so many of these <laughs> throughout the year, so we really <laughs> love them when they show up. <laughs> Uh, Tammy was trying to post our table runner tutorial, but it won't let her. But thanks for trying, Tammy. Oh, yeah. Um, you can just, anyone, uh, we mentioned this in, in most videos, but if, if you're wondering if uh, there's a tutorial on a certain something, just type Jada and Stitches, and then whatever you're looking for in uh, the Google box or the YouTube box, yeah. and it'll pop up. Yeah, I know I know so, they keep changing things. So if, um, and depending on the device that you're on, um, that's another thing, because we, we do most of our internet surfing. I guess we're kind of old, so we do a lot of it on the computer <laughs> and like the laptop. <laughs> yeah, and we're old. We're, we, use, <laughs> we use the PC. <laughs> so we're we're very familiar with how things look on the PC. Um, but we do uh, we do have phones that are relatively new, so we do know how to sort of um, look at things um, on the internet. And I know how Google and YouTube looks really different depending on if you're on a mobile device or if you're on the computer. Um, so the search bar is usually literally an open box with like a magnifying glass icon in it. And if you're already on the YouTube site, it'll be sitting kind of up top with that little magnifying glass in it. And that's where you can type in Jaden Stitches and then whatever if you're looking for Thing, a hat, yeah, whatever you might be looking for, for a table runner, a rug. It also works though in the general Google search box. Yes, it works on the. That's right. So yeah, you can you the can website, try that out the too. The website searching versus you specifically YouTube. Yeah, yeah. and oh, so and another or. thing, if you're still kind of getting used to navigating um, YouTube. Whenever you click on somebody's username, so if you're on the YouTube platform and you can see all the comments and stuff, um, when you see me writing back or you see oh. our name right underneath the video, yes? Bernadine says that the kids these days like to use laptops versus phones and iPads. Really? So we've been, we, I guess we've waited so long that we've we're back up, in vogue. We're back in vogue. <laughs> <That's a lot. laughs> we're going to have to throw out our new phones now. <laughs> Just toss them out. Oh, these are old. These are old. This is old news. What? Okay, good to know. <laughs> well, I like the big screen. I don't know about you guys, but I love to look at things. I on the love. Screen. I mean, I like the phone because of the oh, it's mobility. Handy. Yeah, yeah. But, but oh, like, there's, there's nothing better than sitting down in front of the big screen and the lot. You know, the computer, the mouse. Yeah. I don't know. It just feels good. Yeah, like if I'm if I'm going to be watching YouTube or <clears throat> Netflix or anything, and I'm working on a big project. I like to to do that. I either cast it to the television or I sit with the laptop open and I and I work and stare at a bigger screen. It's a little easier and I'm not worried about sort of kicking over my phone because <laughs> I'm a little klutzy. And also the phone, you know, once again, the mobility is amazing. Yes. But, but tapping those little <laughs> buttons everywhere, you're you're constantly hitting the wrong thing. Especially when you have big man fingers, big, right? Big fat, meaty <laughs> fingers. I'm gonna show off my big fat. Big... Look at these things. They're, I, I'm always. I'm always tapping the wrong thing. <laughs> I, I find I use my baby finger for a lot of things because it's it's a bit it's small it's the smallest a little bit of real estate I have. Yeah, oh I guess God. the baby finger, but I'm always like just lightly tap and nope, that's not what I wanted. Yep, nope, that's not what I wanted. Back, back, back. <laughs> Anyways, enough it's, ranting about uh, <laughs> small screens. Yeah, so I was going to say, if you click on someone's username, um, like our name, if you see it underneath a video on YouTube, or even in the comment section, if you see sort of my name or anybody's name pop up, you click directly on that name, it will take you to the home page, so the channel <laughs> home page, and you can sort of find a lot on the channel home page. We've got our channel home page on YouTube set up so that we've got our recent uploads, so if you've been away for a little while and you don't know what we've been doing lately, you can pop in and see the recent uploads. That's usually up front. And then we have some of our more popular um, playlists right there on the front page. But across the top, you'll see 
home, video, playlist, community, and a few other things about. If you click on those words, and it's the same whether you're on a laptop, PC, or if you're on your mobile device, they'll all show across the top. The videos will give you every single video we've ever done. The playlists will show you all the playlists we put together. The community tab is where we sort of share photographs and things that are going on behind the scenes, little updates. Um, and you can comment there and chat with us there too. And the website homepage has the Twitter feed, so. Oh, well, that's the website. That's different. I'm talking about the channel homepage. Oh, you're, sorry. You're going to confuse me I was and reading. everybody I else. was reading. I've confused everyone. I thought you were talking about where to get news because you started talking about the community tab. Yeah, that's, we, we post information on the community tab. Like if we've got sort of a surprise, you know, thing coming up, like a, a live stream or there's something, an event going on at our Etsy shop or something, we'll often sort of indicate that in the community stream. But Mr. and Stitches is talking about our website, which is different than our channel homepage. And a lot of you who have been here for any period of time know about our website. Um, it's usually the link is in the description boxes of all of our videos. And it's the www.jadainstitches.com link. And same thing, when you get there, there's going to be a whole bunch of options at the <laughs> top about, um, you know, the free patterns we have there. We have a blog, although I haven't really updated that in a while. <laughs> We've got a shop page, we've got a few other things there, and a bunch of tools, tips, tricks, stuff to just help you, uh, hopefully, with all of your crochet projects and whatever else sort of you might have questioning in the yarny world of crochet and knitting. Amanda wants to know if we would make another Grafgan uh, tutorial. Yes, we've had a lot of requests for Grafgan, yeah. so we'll probably do another one. I have to settle on an, an image? image that I, I like that <laughs> as I like to hang the graph gans up. I love I love looking at all of the detail and the work that go into those things. So. Oh, there's a suggestion from Amanda. A horse. A horse. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, a horse. That's got a, a lot of little moving parts. A pony? I, I think you have to, when you're doing a graph gan, you kind of want to keep it keep it simple. Yeah, I was thinking you could do a stick figure horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, With like just... one blade of hay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think for the first the first one a horseshoe yeah that's a good oh idea. A horseshoe that's, that's more neat. a more simplistic um, yeah I, I think yeah trying to sort of come up with a an image especially well you technically that, you could do anything but yeah if, if you wanted to look right you'd have to make like a blanket the size of a house right because yeah. you need a lot of pixels. <laughs> Now there's a challenge a yeah. blanket that would cover that's a house. the new challenge that would bust cover the stash. house. <laughs> In a blank, in a crochet blanket. That's a cute idea, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be warm in the it'd winter be, time. It'd be, it, it would, it would think look, of how warm that would be. I think the neighbors would complain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've finished all my coffee. I've got no coffee left. I'm gonna have to oh, have a second cup later. Darn it! Oh well. We're gonna have to make another cup. Is I had a little list of um things I wanted to remember to talk about today in regards to kits. So I just want to know, Mr. Institches, if I, oh, thank you. I hope that's the right Let's one. Let's see, things to look for. Oh, you know what? A couple last little minute things I want to mention. Um, when you're picking up a kit, sorry, I'm really going in circles today, everybody. <laughs> if, if you're going to buy a crochet kit, um, the things you want to look for are what it contains. Um, if there's an age limit or restriction or something on it, um, and anything else that you might be sort of sensitive to. So for example, if you have fiber sensitivity, you wanna make sure that it tells you what kind of fiber content the yarn is. So this one, for example, says it's acrylic and I'm okay with acrylic. Um, but if you had issues with acrylic or you were looking more for wool or cotton, you would probably wanna make sure that that's what was in the kit if you were getting it. Um, so things, uh, and, and if you're concerned about, you know, where it's coming from or where the, inf the the stuff is being sourced, then that information should all be on the label and you can be, you should be able to sort of peruse the label and see what's in it. Um, making your own recovered. What to expect? We opened it up and unboxed it and we're going to do a dedicated video in the future. I'll actually do this. I'll put, the, put it together on camera so that you guys can sort of see how it goes together and maybe how those instructions work out if they do. We'll see. Um, I talked about crocheting a party and that's pretty much, yeah, I did. Ah, how do you like that? I didn't even have to look at my notes. I'm so pleased. With that. <laughs> Good memory. <laughs> well, I try to address, I know we get a lot of questions about 
um, certain themes of things. And every once in a while, I see like a little upswing. And because we mentioned the kit last week, a lot of you were asking about it and you wanted to see it unboxed and you were kind of curious about what's in them or where they come from. And so we really wanted to address the different kinds of kits that you can either make yourself or pick up and what to look for, things to keep in mind, especially if you've never bought one before. <laughs> Sandra's asking me to make a fresh pot of coffee, <laughs> but it's going to take too long. It's going to take too long. We've only got about five a little under five minutes. We 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 do uh we, we make our coffee on the the stove top, so we have to kind of sit there and pay attention to it, so the thing doesn't boil over. <laughs> <laughs> so that would take Mister and Stitches away for too long, I'm afraid. We'll have some more later, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> that's as soon as the live stream's done, we'll we'll dive we'll, we'll swan, stampede we'll down swan dive to the coffee ma machine, <laughs> just right off the the second belt, the second floor. <laughs> Do, do a do a backflip dive into the <laughs> sploosh into the beans. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we like coffee. <laughs> yeah, we're coffee addicts. We do. Here, we we do sure. like our coffee up here. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, we got about five minutes. Roughly. Oh, okay. So well, there if there's any else? last minute questions, that's um, a great idea about the kits what to put in a kit. If any of you have any awesome ideas or suggestions about things that you would put in kits if you were making them, or if you've made them up in the past. Um, I have made up lots of kits for friends in the past. I usually include one of my own hooks, one that I've, I've had because I often end up with multiples of the same size. Um, so I include a, hit, a hook that I know I'm comfortable using. That's a medium size, sort of a five and a half millimeter or six millimeter, somewhere in that area. Uh, I always include a ball of yarn or two. I like to include a pattern if I'm not going to be there. Um, sometimes I'll sit with them and do the project. Buttons, ribbons, uh, a wool needle, a pair of scissors, um, just about anything else that I might, oh, like a measuring tape, some like little things that you think might be handy down the road if they really get into crochet. Those are all nice things to include in a kit, but a kit can be as simple or as, as extreme as you want it to be. Um, if it's for a kid, keep in mind little hands, keep in mind sort of limited dexterity or dexterity that's still getting going. Here's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, have you decided what you will make with your cotton yarn? Oh, yes. Everybody, thank you so much for all of the super cool suggestions. I've heard everything from backpacks to market bags to rugs to mats for um, animals at the local uh, animal to, um, humane society. I've heard so many really nifty ideas. And I have to say, I've narrowed the list down to a short list, but I think I'm going to turn it into an actual tutorial. So I'm going to keep it a secret, but I will tell you this, it's a yarn eater of a project. So Yay. <laughs> If you don't have a whole lot of cotton yarn, then um, I will explain all that up front when we do this upcoming video, but at least you'll be able to see what I put all of this yarn into. And um, yeah, we'll get to that down the road. But yeah, thank you so much for all of your suggestions because they were awesome. There, you, you guys just come up with some of the neatest ideas. And uh, Sandra says she would like to see you and I go on, go on a yarn shopping uh, tour and, uh, and, and post it. I'll tell you what it looks like. <laughs> it looks like Mr. and Stitches is like this, pushing the cart, looking terrified, and thinking about like all of the moths flying out of his wallet. <laughs> and I am moving at the speed of sound, ping pong up and down all the different aisles, picking up balls, stepping them into my what face. What do you think of this one? Waiting what do you think of this the one? Cart. <laughs> we actually, there are there are a handful of videos where we've got little clips. We of, do. Yeah, couple. but they're kind of tucked away. But we've away. never done a we've dedicated, done a dedicated no. video. No, you know what? We will probably have to do that. So I'm yeah. thinking early For next sure. year when I break my fast of yarn shopping. <laughs> um, we I think will... we need to extend this. <laughs> I think we need to extend it to at least another five years. That's why I'm trying to do all these big stash busting. I hope to have a bunch more stash busting projects um, in the the coming months. Um, as you know, this year's calendar blanket is a stash buster, um, especially for me. I've been working through the yarn I already had on hand. Um, my big rainbow blanket, this big, beautiful thing right here. I just love rainbows. <laughs> That's a big stash buster. Um I've got a couple of leftover works in progresses, but they don't use up enough yarn. So I'm hoping over the next few months to come up with some other big yarn stash busting projects. And they'll probably be acrylic yarn based because that's what I have the most of. I typically buy a lot of acrylic. 
What's this? <laughs> I don't know if you guys can read that, I will. but it says, I will not buy yarn for five years. <laughs> That's not my signature. <laughs> and I, no, I want you to sign it. <laughs> no, I positively refuse. You must sign. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm kidding. Five years is way, five years is way I, too I, long. I, you'd, you'd have a heart attack. I would. I'd have a heart attack. Yeah. You'd be like, What's worth? What, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why am I even here? Why am I even here? <laughs> What's the point? Uh, no, this was a good thing. I did this once before, as some of you know. I had a yarn, uh, a yarn hiatus uh, year where I didn't buy any yarn. I just tried to use up what I had, and I almost made it. I made it to December twenty fourth, and we went out. <laughs> Shopping. Everyone is telling you, don't sign, don't <laughs> sign. I'm going to forge your signature. I'm going to forge I it. I don't think that's going to stand up in court. It's, <laughs> oh, it's totally going to stand as up in court. As cute as your handwriting is, it looks nothing I know. like mine. I was really whipping that out. Oh, my God. Of course, I'm kidding. I let her buy yarn all the time. Uh, yeah, and, and maybe early in the season we will go. It will take you guys with us, depending <laughs> on where we go. I'm not sure. We yeah, won't. I mean, we've 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 just us doing that before many times but we just i guess yeah we we have limited yarn shopping availability in our area because we really do live in the middle of nowhere um so we kind of have to make a trek although i know that there are lens mills in the southern ontario area and i might maybe we'll maybe yeah we'll that's what we should do we should film, yeah yeah go, film, film a, little, a little shopping vlog in there because that that's that's, a good, the best. that's a great place yeah to, uh, and anyone who's not familiar with the lens mills there's, there's just a handful of them in southern ontario they're <laughs> they, they kind of they kind of have a whole bunch of things in them you're still being encouraged not to sign <laughs> <laughs> i will not sign don't worry um but they've got um they've got a large selection of stuff for sewing they've got a decent craft sort of supply section and they have one of the best yarn selections for decent pricing i'd say in in southern ontario that i've come across anyway so that's kind of a fun place too and it's very like industrial it's not a refined clean tidy even really well lit store it's very much like an outlet mill kind of a feel but it's fun. So um, maybe we'll take you guys there and you can sort of see. Okay, what we let's, uh, we're, we're kind of running out of time here. Okay. So here's a good question from a Aspen. Um, for a crochet kit for kids, yes. would a chunky yarn with a bigger hook be better than a smaller hook with worsted weight? I would suggest that for, now it depends on the age of the child. Um, if I'm going to say anywhere between nine and 11, so eh, even eight, if they're, you know, particularly precocious and they've got decent dexterity, I would recommend five and a half millimeter, six millimeter or six and a half millimeter um, and a regular hook. So nothing with a necessarily a comfort grip because they should be able to manage it at that. It's about the size of a large pencil, so they shouldn't have too much trouble with the hook. And I would recommend a well spun medium weight yarn. So chunky yarn can be a little problematic it can be a little too big to fight your way through especially when you're learning <laughs> but um and i've got some right here so that's a burnett super value it's pretty much identical to a red heart super saver it's a medium size four worsted weight yarn it's well spun so it's not going to split when they're trying to because a lot of us start with very tight tension so it's not going to split easily and that's the kind of yarn I would recommend. I started knitting at 11 with um, knitting needles that were way too long, but they were five and a half millimeter. So they were a really good size. And um, I was given this kind of yarn and it's it was just the easiest stuff to work with because I tried the thicker yarns and I found it frustrating and I tried the thinner yarns and I found it frustrating. So I'd say right down the middle is the best place to start for kids. And um, and they'll, they'll, they'll amaze you, they can, they can, Kids are amazing. They can pick up things so fast, and they're when they want to learn something. It's it's like I don't know. It's amazing. I wish we could channel that. Though. Amanda <laughs> says her four year old daughter is learning, and she loves it. Well, there you go. Isn't that adorable? That's awesome. Yeah, I love that. That's yeah. that's and and now is, does your four year old use the worsted weight yarn? Does she use the hooks that you have available? Like has she got a a sort of something that she's more comfortable with? I don't know if. You can get a comment in there for Mr. and Stitches to see. Yeah, I'll but, see if um, it comes through. 
Um, but we've got to get to our coffee. Oh, yes. We've got, we've got so a coffee date. So <laughs> we have to wrap it up for, for today. We'll be back next week. Same same time. Same, same. Uh, I want to say same bat channel, but like same same yarn channel. Same, same yarn, yarn time. channel, well, yeah. Am I, did I just date myself? I don't know. Probably. <laughs> um, so... Friday, uh, next week. Next Friday. Friday at 12, 12 noon Ontario time. Eastern. So lunchtime for us. Now, somebody told me that was that was 6 p.m. in Norway, 9 a.m. Pacific. Um, I think <laughs> Cheryl and Francis told me that that was in the evening. So like around 10 or 11 at night, I think, in, <clears throat> in Hawaii. This is sort of what you guys have managed to tell me over the last couple of weeks and thank you i just love it i love hearing where you're all watching from and what time it is and what you're up to it's just it's so neat um but thank you thank you guys so much for sitting with us doing some crochet chatting with mr institute joking around with us yeah having love, some fun we love the joke starting off your weekend on a yarny foot <laughs> And uh, we will see you guys very soon. We are um, definitely going to be here on Friday at noon, Ontario. Um, that's Eastern time, right? Yeah, Ontario Eastern. Eastern, yes, that is Eastern, Eastern time. Eastern standard? I think I don't we're know. in Eastern it's Easter. daylight. I don't know. It's Eastern. <laughs> Whatever Eastern it's is Eastern right now. Eastern something. So we'll be here next Friday, and we will see all of you. And um, we will make sure we put those links we mentioned in the description box down below as soon as yes. we finish with the live stream. Um, so thank you guys so much. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope you have time to craft and we will see you soon. Bye everyone. Have a great weekend. <laughs> Bye everybody. It's coffee time for us. Coffee, 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 coffee. It's coffee time for us. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs>